Welcome back. Thanks for stopping by the shop. The question today is why? Why would you need a Baxter spin-on filter for a Rubicon? Who cares? This is the second vehicle we've done this with. The question is why? Because we're stating that this is gonna save your vehicle. And there's Dr. Torque over there to explain us why. Dr. Torque. Oh. Tell us why. I'm telling you why. Why? Do you care? Why, why? why I care? Because it's my engine. Yeah, but in, and without this, there's there there is an issue that we are resolving that modern engines have created. So it's kind of a European design. The oil filters on these 3.6s that's in a lot of Chrysler products and the 3.2s, like in my wife's Jeep in a previous video, Achieve. have a canister filter. And there's nothing inherently wrong with a canister filter except this one's at the top of the engine. And so each time you turn the vehicle off, it slowly drains the oil back down. And so when you start the engine the next time, if it's been sitting for more than 20 minutes or so, it has to pump oil up to the filter and then fill that entire canister before oil then is distributed out to other parts of the engine. Yeah, so that whole time it's running dry. It's well, not good. It's not necessarily dry everywhere. There's certain areas that are, are fine, but other areas that are not as great. Upper and end. Yeah, one of the heads, I guess, doesn't get oiling yet until that's filled. And then also there's hydraulic. Because it's like sequential. It like starts pumping oil in one section and it moves over. Yeah, it goes through different different rounds. So anyway, and and yeah. then another thing is that the, there are parts of the engine that have to do with the camshaft and timing that are um, uh, hydraulically actuated. And oh, so yeah, the hydraulics are dry at that point. So your timing isn't quite right for, for the first three to five seconds or so. So, you know, I just and think this it's better it. to have that, you know, lubed. Yeah. So that's quickly. another question. How in the world could a changing this out solve all those problems? We'll show you. You got your light? I have a light. So here we pop the hood, look at a few things. All right, oh. do this stuff. Oh wait, I forgot. He got some new wheels on this and tires. Let's take a peek. Ooh, I I think those are very Jeep. Are those Jeep? Is that a Jeep in the center? What is that? No, it says Mavic. Oh, kind of look like a Jeep grill, sort of. But I like is they're Jeep light and BFTA tires, man. That's sharp looking. Cool. It appears as though you have a loose part in here. I already installed it. I'm done. Done. You put that in there to warm it up, didn't you? So like it, bacon a tater. It got down close to zero outside last night, and so this was really cold when I pulled it out. And well, so that's much better. when I got here, I just put it in here to just heat it up. Just dropped it in. That was smart. <laughs> so it's not cold on my fingies. So we got to address this orange helmet. Yes. Do you have a knife? Knife. Let's find one. Let's talk about the ugly problem on this vehicle. No, it's not ugly at all, actually. It's, oh, it's just, ugly. Is it ugly? <laughs> but we can't, we can't, you, all right. I'm, I'm fumbling with words. We can't just take the Baxter adapter and drop it on this one. There's a, there's a couple issues that we're dealing with. So from 2011 to 2013, the 3.6s that they used in Jeeps and other Chrysler products had a different design for the oil filter than the uh, 2014 and newer. And so the Baxter unit that is available at the time of filming does not fit these vehicles. They have been, they do have one in development yeah. and maybe by now it's actually available, but. Yeah, you um, might be able to get it. By the time you see this, it might already be out. Yeah, but the, uh, other thing about these 3.6s is the and the 3.2s is the oil filter housing well let's see if we can see down in there i don't know if you can see this one here you might see kind of shiny metal no, underneath like that, orange that orange cap that orange cap yeah so yeah, you, you can see how it's kind of shiny metal from the factory those things are plastic mm -hmm. and sometimes people get a little rough when they're doing their oil changes and over tighten this and they crack it and cause it to, to leak or Sometimes just it with all of the, you know, starts and stops of the engine, it, you know, heat cycles, it can, uh, the plastic starts to deteriorate. And these things have a tendency to start leaking down inside the, down underneath everything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> On top of the engine under the intake manifold. Very bad spot. And so a company named Dorman has created a fix for that. And uh, I think they, they have a whole line of things they call OE fix. But uh, this is what one of those looks like. There's already one on this Jeep, but I have another one here because I may eventually need one for my wife's Jeep. So I thought I'd share this with you. What comes in here 
and an idea of what what I'm talking about. Bolts. Oh, it got Loctite on it. Wow, look at all this. So, as you can see, it comes with the orange cap that says, Whoa, ho, ho, this may or may not be the right filter for the year you're thinking Whoa, it is. Pay attention, tech. It's got new seals because you have to take the intake manifold, upper and lower manifolds off to change this out. It's got this unit here. That's the part I'm talking about, this plastic that from cool. Chrysler. This is plastic. Whoa, and it's got all these oil and water passages in it. Yeah. And then... Crazy. It also, right here, I think has a uh, temp and oil pressure. Oh, that's what those are. Sensors that screw in there, or they screw in here. I don't know which end. I didn't do it. <laughs> um, and then it comes with a new oil cooler itself. That's awesome. Yeah, because if you looked at the our other video, the, the cooler is a bit of an issue on this as well when we were actually at the at the factory or the headquarters for baxter and we got to interview those guys so that's cool that's nice thank you for showing us that though, Baxter. so one thing about this is this helps fix that oil leak hopefully permanently because it, we don't have the plastic to fatigue and fail mm -hmm. anymore probably not permanently because there's still seals involved but one thing to know is this actually upgrades, if you want to call it that, the older engines to the style of filter that the new engines use. That so is also a big deal. This is a 2012. I have the Dorman unit on it now. And now that I've done that, I need the newer Baxter unit on here. You're so right, the right. same model that we put on my wife's car yeah, is so going to go on this one. Once again, they're working on a new release that will just drop right in here. Tom's already changed that out, so the one that they have that's for a different Jeep works on this one. Does that make sense? Is that all crystal clear now? All right, what the heck are you doing? You need this, you've requested okay. a tool. So, I'm gonna use a ratchet and a, in this case, a 15, 16 socket. It might be metric, I don't know. It's close enough for what we're doing. Yeah. Close enough for Tom Fork. Exactly. What do they say? Is it, is it close enough for... It's close enough for Chris. Close enough for... <laughs> oh, it's, no, no, it's only for Chris. Yeah, take that, Chris. Yeah. Take that, Chris. Um, hey, if you want to check out a cool channel, though, it's, it's Yoshimoshi Garage. Yoshimoshi. Yoshimoshi. Go check him out. He's got some really cool stuff. He's some sort of smart guy and builds stuff for satellites and things. But he works on vehicles. And that's where it's fun. So I have now loosened this up. I thought it was all the way loose, but apparently not quite. I, pa I paused too soon. You were just about ready to pull that out. So here is what the stock-like filter... Oh, it stayed in there. Oh, there it is down there. No, you can't huh. see it. It's supposed to click into here and it's come out with this, but it did not. So I guess now I get to get some oil on my fingers. Yeah, you gotta touch it. Yuck. Look at that big old thing. <clears throat> so yeah, this is supposed to be clicked in there like that. Yeah, ah, that sounded like it clicked in there. It did. You need a rag, I'm gonna get you one. So, this is the, stop! Do not proceed without hammer time. reading. Do not proceed without hammer time, yeah. It looks like you're wrapping up a piece of meat. Exactly, it's kind of oily. But that's a good way to uh, hopefully protect that and put it in the box, double win, I like it. It's a big old hole down there, what's, what's down there? So Look at that. you can see down there the inside of, of that inside of that aluminum housing we were looking at. Cool. You can see that little hole right there That's cool. is, where That's this, cool. is where this nipple goes. That's where that goes. And then this O-ring right here seals around on this doohickey here, this bigger ring. Yeah, which takes the place of that, the one, the, the, the filter basically. That it's all shaped like the filter. But it also is spring loaded. So, so as you tighten it down, so it stays it sealed. Yep, that's nice. And then there's also going to be another O-ring that goes across up at the top here, that then seals it up here. That's awesome. So. And and this, when you turn the engine off, it's it holds the oil up in here. Yeah, there's a there's a pressure relief valve in here that yep, is spring loaded, yep. right there that holds the oil up into the filter. But this filter itself. Also has an anti-drain back. Yeah, different kind of valve. Filter. 
Yep, so two, two things. So there's two things that keep the oil up here, so when you start the engine, it has oil available to go out everywhere yeah. much cool. more quickly. There are a couple things that you need to pay attention to when you're putting this on, because there's a Schrader valve, which we didn't talk about yet, and that has to do with changing the oil. It's actually a really cool deal, because if you just took it apart and it's holding all that oil up there, and you take the thing, you're like, we're gonna change the oil and change the filter. You're gonna have all that oil come out. So there's a Schrader valve that you can apply air to that just opens those valves and drains that. But there's a few parts on this, including this little guy here at the moves that, that you need to line up. So, so, so what do we gotta do here? On so there's two holes on this. There's one on this side and one on this side. And basically what you do is you test fit it. So without the O-rings added, you screw this in until it stops and then you back it out until you get one of these two holes where it's gonna be and easy to get spot. the Schrader valve, yep. you know, access. And then you um, pull it back out, put a plug in the other one, whichever side that is, and then, put the Schrader, and then don't put the Schrader <laughs> valve in yet. You put the O-ring here and the O-ring here, screw it back down again until you've got it where that Schrader valve hole is gonna be where you want it to be. And then you use a small Allen wrench hex key, whatever you want to call it. I think it's a 530 seconds, if I remember correctly. It's all in the instructions. Yes, the instructions are good. But then you tighten that, which moves this cleat here to cause interference on those threads, so it will not back yeah, out anymore. Yeah, so, so it de-aligns them. So right now everything's aligned up and it pushes it down. I guess it's probably down or yeah. whatever, but it pinches so it holds it in place. That way you don't have to, like normally you tighten something down until it's tight and you kind of, you doctor torque it down a little bit. <laughs> But in this case, you can have it loose and then use that cleat to create interference to hold it tight. So that allows you to line those holes up where you can get the Schrader valve in the proper position. It's actually really cool. So for my own purposes while I'm doing this, I'm paying attention to the fact that these two holes are 90 degrees away from this thing, which I'll be able to see. And this is aligned with this logo. Yeah, that's a good point is to remember that that logo actually is positioned to line up with so that in way between, it's it's 90 off of the bull holes and it's it's lined up perfectly with that so once i get it screwed in i'll be able to say okay it's the one that's this direction or this direction from this yeah there you go that i need there to either go. plug or whatever I like so it. okay Let's I, put that sucker in there or you can just unplug it i guess just got to remember to hook it back up i think that'll be a massive vacuum leak if i don't <laughs> Yeah, that might be. Okay. Just give it more air. So these two hoses both had to be unhooked from the air intake here. So I could screw this down in here. Yeah. And it's been mentioned by the manufacturer of the Baxter unit that sometimes you have to do a slight amount of grinding on the intake manifold itself, right in this area here somewhere. I don't know exactly where. We have enough clearance for us. We're good. We're fine, but I think there's like a little protrusion on some of the newer intakes a nub that, comes out that you have to just do a small amount of grinding on it. That's just in case you run into it and like Tom was saying, he's like, how'd those guys get that in there? Well, yours might have a little nub or protrusion, but it doesn't sound like it's very much grinding on ours. We didn't need it at all. So this one here looks like I have it screwed in all the way and I kind of like the position it's in right now. Okay. So right now, I, I would put the plug <laughs> obviously right here because I'm not going to be able to get an air valve back here. But over here, if you can see, so you like that? I kind of have a big, yep, big space big, big over void. here yeah. that I could put the Schrader valve on, and that's where I would be able to put an air hose on to drain the oil out of the filter uh, at oil change time. I like it. Okay, you got something over there in your hands that looks ready to be installed for real this time. Correct. I figured out where I wanted the plug to go, so we just installed the plug, and then I put the O-rings on right here and here, mm -hmm. and then I put a little bit of oil on them so they you know, can move in the housing as I'm installing it. It's so it. much easier. It's so much easier. Man, I, I sometimes I put stuff together, like I got that Kawasaki four-wheeler that I'm working on, and I forgot to do that on a part and it was just, it would not go. And you'd think it would, because one side had oil and the other didn't. But anyways, it's just really good to do stuff like that. It just makes it easier. Just grab a little oil, like just pulled it out of the can. We put some Kawasaki on this, so it's, it's not gonna know what to do now. It's gonna be fast. 
It's gonna be fast, it's gonna go on water too. Keep the shots tight, man. Oh, tight shots. Tight Got shots. It. I don't know what Dan was saying. <laughs> Grip that shot tight. The first time I screwed it in by hand and that was fine because there were no O-rings on here. This time, even though the O-rings are lubed, it's still going to be easier. It's got that really sweet bolt. Call it a nut. nut. But let's uh, use a one inch deep socket to screw it in. Oh yeah, and it's not tight. I think you went well, a little further. Or you, I did right? go further with the, with the ratchet that I did. I'm just trying to figure out where I want to actually, actually stop. Because yeah. I have to screw that 90 degree elbow on. Mm, so nice. that might be where I want to be. And for the record, I borrow tons and tons of tons of his tools all the time. So that was just a funny thing to say. And I thought it was funny, but I figured I better clarify. But the, but the socket is fine. Socket is fine, that's it. Th this is the part that's actually a little bit tricky. Dr. Torque here is working on because you can't put that Schrader valve in and then spin it in because it's going to hit everything. There's not enough clearance. So you have to spin it in, get it to where you can put the Schrader valve in, screw that in, and then like spin it back. And so right now he it won't it won't turn over this way far enough to get it in the front. So he's going to try to back it out and put it on that side. So that's that's like one of the tricky parts. So see, Tom has now gotten this tightened back here, but this is not quite where he wants it. He's going to now move this back this direction. No, I think I have or it where I want it. Do you like right there? Okay. Yeah, well, I was, I was looking at it with, you know, like let's say I was using my air chuck, yep. like my long one coming in. I think at this angle right here would be pretty good. Oh, that's good. a good angle, okay. If I were to turn this back where I originally had it, then I'd have to be coming in oh, like this, like the that. alternator okay. would be in the way. So you can, you can adjust this until you get that on, because you might not, you, but the point at which it turns might not be where you want it. So, but now that that's there, now you just gotta tighten this up, right? Correct. Yeah, that, which pinches that cleat, and holds it in place. Exactly. Right. Here's a little tip that Dr. Torque did the other last time that I was like, a little bit, a little bit impressed with, a little, little bit of amazement. So by hand, this is as tight as I can get this because it has to be, you know, it's got to have some length to it because I can't use this end and get down in here. So what I discovered last time with all of my trying by myself, I could, you know, it still was allowing that to turn a little too easily. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. what I did last time, and it probably won't work this time. Hold out your sorcery book. Because we're talking about how awesome this is. Yeah. But. I found a 12 point socket that this kind of fits in. And it, uh, yeah, it like turns, you use a socket wrench on it. So I put this in here like this. So it's like that. And then I'm able to change this to tightening. That's so crazy. And it's not like it's perfection by any means, but. But it, it allows you to get way more. It gives me a little more on torque on there. That was nuts, that was cool. So if that's all, so if that little thing's all you're working with, there's your tip on how to actually get it tight. I like it. That's actually a two piece really, cause that's like the elbow. Yeah, there's an elbow the there. And then this is the actual Schrader valve. That goes on that. So it's just like, you know, airing up your tires on your car or bicycle. Yeah. It's the exact same thing. That's what it's for is you can put air on this to drain the oil filter before you do an oil Pump change. up the jam. <laughs> wow. Won't be good. We, we moved into the nineties now. <laughs> We're or for, a little further into the nineties. So that just goes into here. So you just nice super, super simply super goes simple. into here. There we go. Okay. Cool. And then on this particular one, and your mileage may vary, I'm using a 7 16 deep socket. So you bought that. So I bought the oil filter on Amazon. Obviously, I guess. Came in this envelope. That's and this is this is how it was delivered. <laughs> is uh is the filter intact? So what did you get? What What is that? So That's this particular the... one is a Wix XP, which is their high performance filters. Um, it's model number is 57060. Okay, that's cool. That's good. XP. And Baxter's Extra website power. says that you should use a taller one, like I used on my wife's Jeep, that's about that much taller. But when I looked at it and saw that these hoses were right here, oh. I was thinking that maybe those would cause some interference. Yeah. So. I figured I'd go with the short one, and if it had plenty of clearance, next time I'd use the tall yeah, one. Yeah, but if we start with the tall one, I won't, you can't get it then, it'll be a bummer. So, so, okay, cool. In any case, we're gonna get some more of that high performance Kawasaki oil. So we can go on, on land here. and sea. So it's lubed before we yep. screw her on, and then we will return. Okay, so let's, let's see how that does fit. 
Yeah, I mean that already, even the short one kind of pops up there, so that's gonna be yeah, it's gonna be a maneuvering job. It'll fit, but yeah, it's a little on the so tight let's side. Let's see whether it goes around it or over it. Or... It'll have to go around it, I'm pretty sure. Okay. So it looks like, like you're saying, that uh, once you get that stuff routed around it, that the height wouldn't be a problem. So yeah. that's good. Yeah, it's it's kind of tight back here. There's Very a little good. bit of interference. I have to move this hose around a little bit to get the filter to start to screw on. But other than that, once it's started, it's fine. Yeah, so that's like a view of it in place. So a taller filter would be fine and probably even be better because it'll give you something to grab onto while you're tightening and or loosening in the future. I like it. But that is the filter installed. The whole Baxter unit's done now. The only steps left is to start the vehicle and look for leaks. Ooh, I have some, okay. Here's something you should do be, when you, before you do this, have somebody else start your engine up and just listen to it. Well, we, I, we can even do it right now. Well, true, because there's no oil in it. And there's a lot of, you'll hear me, metal parts clanging around there like on the Cherokee we did. And it, it's, it's loud. And then when you do, when you have this, and then it fills up with oil the second time, it won't do it the first time. You started, it's like silent. It's crazy how much of a difference it is. So yeah, well, let's do that. Let's start it. Cause this will be like starting it without the oil. Cause there's none in there. And then we'll be able to hear it. So I guess we should crack the garage, huh? Hold on. Okay, uh, let's do it. So there's the leak there between the filter and the Baxter unit. There's where the Baxter goes into the oil filter housing. There's this right here, which could leak, the actual Schrader valve. The two locations there. And then there's this plug over here that could possibly leak. And I don't see any leaking on any of those spots. Well, I see some oil here, but I don't know if that's from when you were three oil in it now. And somewhere on that side here. That might have been weird just three oil in it. Oh, belt right there. Because it's pointed the wrong direction. So no, no leaks. It looks pretty good. I think we had a little bit of drip there from before, but now it's been sitting. So let's start it up now after it's been sitting and see if there's any difference in sound. So I don't know if you noticed that on the Cherokee, it was a, 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 a substantial difference in sound. There is some on this one too. Not as much as Cherokee, so if you can go check that video out, but there it is. Man, this thing's looking good. Look at this. I am liking it. That's cool, man. Those, that, those wheels and tires balance that out nicely. I like it. This is my award. I don't like to brag or anything about that. I did get this from my wife. <laughs> I mean, look at it. It's pretty awesome. What are you doing? What are we doing? What's happening What's here? What's so awesome here? Best husband ever. Oh. I didn't even buy it for myself. <laughs> you might have to rewind that again and watch that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right I thought we were just going to stop and collaborate and listen. <laughs> Is that how the song goes? Stop. Collaborate and listen. That, that ruins a whole song. <laughs> I need to get a rag for this man. Vanilla Ice has changed his ways. He's now all about collaborate and listen. Stop. <laughs> it ain't hammer time. It's collaborate and listen time. When don't I impress you, <laughs> Watch out. You're not packing a microwave, are you? Nope, no, no microwave. So, oh, any more pieces in there? Two more pieces. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure... That's that, weird that that came in a bag and not a box. I'm pretty sure that the envelope, or this box, was already torn up before they put it in the, oh. in the envelope. Is that what happened? But...